CataractCoach.com, a beginning surgeon attempts a dense white cataract. What could go wrong here? Let's watch this case. Now we're gonna show the entire video at two times speed, just so we can be efficient here. So just keep that in mind, everything's sped up. This capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. We're achieving a nice capsulorexis here. This is not an intumescent lens, so there's not any milky fluid coming out. You've seen our videos before of how to decompress that capsule bag and express the lens cortical liquid in order to prevent Argentinian flag sign. And that looks like a pretty nice rexus. So this is a, a beginning surgeon who's done uh, less than 50 cases. That's a beautiful rexus. I like that a lot. Incisions look pretty reasonable too. We didn't get to see the surgeon make them, but that's okay. So now a little bit of a higher dissection. Be very careful with the white cataract because you can't see the fluid wave. So a little bit in each quarter. That looks like a good maneuver. Looks good. Tapping the center of the nucleus. Now, it may rotate just without any high resection because these white cataracts tend to have a soft or liquefied cortex. So it looks like it does rotate a little bit. And so let's see what technique of phaco we will be doing. So here's the phaco probe. And it looks like a 2.4 sleeve, maybe 2.2, 2.4. And that looks good. Phaco probe in the eye. Looks like some adjustments are coming out with the phaco probe. While they're doing that, let's look at the lashes. Draping looks good. Lashes are out of the way. I like that very much. Good draping. Good eye position. Nice exposure. The iris is parallel to the floor of the room. The eye is definitely in primary position during this procedure. This looks very good. I like this. Now there's the phaco probe. Looks like a bevel up orientation. Or maybe it's bevel down. There you go, bevel down. Cleaning up some of the anterior cortex, it appears. Yeah, we don't know the phaco settings. Let's try to get this eye back in primary. See the eye is drifting towards the nasal canthus. Looks like the surgeon's sitting temporarily here. So we need to get the eye back into primary. So for some reason, it came out of the eye. All right, let's go back in the eye. Now it's the bevel up. Now groove, another groove. Looks pretty good. I'd start the groove a little bit closer to the subincisional area. The subincisional rexus, you can groove it a little closer there. And groove deeper and then flatten out. Just up until that uh, rexus edge, good. Grooves are looking pretty good here. Now here you can either uh, widen the groove or just continue to, to go deeper. But you see the sleeve starting to hit the groove, so maybe here you wanna try widening it up a little bit. Let's see. Chopper going in the eye. Are we gonna crack it in half? Mm, maybe. Looks like it. And that's pretty good. There's a crack that's going. Just going to propagate it all the way through. Maybe a little tough to propagate through the subincisional area because there's not much of a groove there. So you can still propagate the crack. Rotate the nucleus around now. Let's see. Rotate. Oh, there we go. Chopper's going to go around this. Looks like we're going to do a little horizontal chop. Break off a little piece. Rotate it again. And buzz the probe in. And that's another good chop. Now the technique here is quite good. So if this really is a resident that's done only 50 cases or so, I'm really impressed. This is quite good. So even though the nucleus with the initial stop and chop technique, the groove didn't prop it all the way through or the crack didn't separate the two halves, the surgeon's able to still use the chopper and do a horizontal chop to bring out these pieces. And there we can now fully separate them and get the first hemi-nucleus removed. Notice how the eye is doing a pretty good job of staying in primary position. The chopper is being used not only to chop, but also to rotate the nucleus and also to push the pieces in front of the tip. These are all advanced moves. Now that's a pretty good result for a surgeon who's just learning. I'm gonna rotate the nucleus. There's a hemi-nucleus left, one half that's remaining. Rotate it so it's in front of the phaco probe. That's important. Buzz into it and then it can be further sub chopped. Let's see, buzzing in here and try a little deeper, maybe. That's better, easier to buzz deeper and then didn't quite chop there. We'll try one more time. Buzz in again and there's a good chop right there. Buzz again and another chop. So this is a very nice technique, a stop and chop technique with a groove down the middle. The surgeon then has two hemonuclear halves which are then further sub-chopped using horizontal chop technique. Again, look at the positioning of the eye, stays in primary. 
And also look how the two instruments float within the incisions and they pivot very nicely within the eye. And the chopper is doing much more than chopping. Notice it's already been chopped, so the chopper is pushing the pieces in front of the FACO probe, helping to rotate them around. These are advanced techniques. This is not something in a novice or beginning surgeon. So the video was submitted anonymously. We don't know who the surgeon is. If it truly is the beginning of a, a learning curve, I commend the surgeon for a beautiful technique. And if this is a more advanced surgeon, you're still doing a great job. Everything looks good here. I am the aphagic state. Time to remove some lens cortex. I can keep in mind we are showing the video at double the normal speed. So things are happening a little bit more quickly here than they are in real life. And I wanted to show you the video unedited. And so in order to get it into a reasonable time frame, we decided to speed it up to double the normal speed. So eye probe going in the eye. Notice that in the paracentesis, there is a little chunk of nucleus that will have to be removed. Cleaning up our capsule bag here, stripping out the lens cortex, taking that out. Looks pretty good. And take out a little bit more. And so far, so good. Now the eye is being kept in the primary position pretty well. Good pivoting technique here. So she's using a standard coaxial eye tip, which is good. And then down to the sub area. And good positioning of bending the tip the other direction, going sub-incisional, rotating it around, grabbing that quite nicely. So far, so good. So again, beautiful technique, very nicely done. And the surgeon certainly gets an A for the effort and the technique, and so far the results look great. Again, look at that paracentesis, though remember there is a little nuclear piece stuck in that paracentesis. That's that blue stained paracentesis. So last bit of the sub-incisional stuff being removed. Looks pretty good. Ah, now we go to that paracentesis. Nope, still there. Here's where I'd use that spatula. Exactly, that's exactly what I'd do. Help free that piece out. Either it'll float outside the eye or go back in the eye. So in this case, it's removed. Cleaning up everything else. There's your excess. Now, you can do some anterior capsular polishing here. That's a little more an advanced technique. I don't expect a beginning surgeon to have to worry about that. So let's fill our capsular bag. There's the rexus. Everything looks great. So now the incision is going to be slightly enlarged. It looks like there's a keratome again. Slightly enlarged. Now, you may be better off just using a larger IA and FACO tip instead of enlarging the incision. Maybe better off just using a 275 tip instead of, instead of enlarging the incision later. Here comes the eye well being placed in the capsule bag. Looks like a, a single piece acrylic lens. This is a little bit of a different design that I'm using. This one has these blue tipped haptics. And then there's the lens. It looks like the Rex overlaps quite nicely. And time to remove viscoelastic. Now I've seen my videos, I like to go behind the eye well to remove viscoelastic. And beginning certain cases, that's not absolutely necessary. You can simply tilt the lens in different meridians to help remove viscoelastic. But it looks like there's still some particular matter. I'd rather do a little more thorough job in removing that. For the hydration of the incision, I'm not a fan of these big, large, white spots of side hydration. I think you can hydrate a little bit less than that. There may still be some retained viscoelastic as well. But it's a beautiful case. Thanks for watching, and please submit your case on cataractcoach.com.